something I did notice from the documentary too is how the girls um, that end up, you know, being sex trafficked and in this line of work of prostitution are often um, like these young, vulnerable girls who a lot of times are going through normal teenage woes, you know, like the, the normal just teenage stuff that you go through. And then they meet these guys online um, who play they play on these vulnerabilities and they promise you know a life of travel like you'll always have your hair done you'll always have your nails done um this luxury lifestyle but basically it's it's all a lie um i don't know if you would want to describe or even if there is like a typical kind of victim um or if it could be just you know anybody so traffickers and another thing I want everyone to understand, pimping is their only job. All day long, mm -hmm. they don't go anywhere. They don't do anything except for manage the victims they have and try and find new victims to exploit. And so they are masters at seeking out and researching vulnerabilities in victims and finding that. So, mm -hmm. for example, if you have a 14-year-old with an open profile to Instagram and they're putting out a post about how they hate their parents right now or they want to run away or they hate life. I have no idea how these traffickers are finding them, but they're they're searching all day long for individuals like that. And they're swooping in and trying to convince them to be lured away from home, run away, yeah. go with the trafficker. And so it's vulnerabilities. Youth are already vulnerable. Mm -hmm. adults are vulnerable too when they're in a domestic violence situation when they're you know using drugs when they are um, unemployed uh, have lack of family support all of those things are right for the picking these victims for a trafficker to swoop in and take them uh, to you know go go exploit them in other states and, and wherever yeah. traveling around so it's definitely easy for them to find vulnerable people, unfortunately. And we have a society right now where so many people are on medicine, so many people are depressed, so many people are doing mm. all kinds of things to medicate themselves. So it's actually really probably not that hard for them to walk down the street or click on a couple of Instagram posts and find someone to nurture into um, yeah. exploiting. Yeah, like the grooming them into that. I. I yeah. watched, I don't remember her name from the documentary, but um, she thought she met a guy who really liked her and she snuck out to be with him. And then before she knew it, she's in front of all these other like large, scary guys who are like, I own you now. Um, and that's not what she signed up for. She thought she was sneaking out to meet this guy who liked her and is going to save her. And no, it was an actual predator. And then he drops her off at a motel and is like, you have to work for me now. Yeah. And so that um, grooming process can happen overnight or it can happen over a period of time. It's really yeah. a matter of, you know, how skilled of a manipulator the trafficker is. But what it is, is, is these, this right here is your new white van. Um, the unfortunately, phone. <laughs> we've got people that think Instagram is going to make them famous and they're going to mm -hmm. make a whole bunch of money if they have all these followers or subscribers or whatever. And yeah. it really is an open door for predators, sex buyers and traffickers to walk right into your house and start yeah. conversations with your child. Um, I spoke to a group the other day and when I first started in 2007, 2008 ish, it was about 15 years old was the average entry into this lifestyle. That age is now below 13, and I've heard um, someone quote 11 years old. So parents yeah. need to start with those conversations early on, like way before 11, especially if they're thinking about giving their child a device mm -hmm. or letting them play a game on the computer or letting them have a social media account. Conversations of, you know, I would tell them people are out there to hurt you. People are out there to do certain things to you. Yeah. If someone's talking to you about deleting our messages that I need to know about, if someone's encouraging you to create a whole nother secret profile that mm -hmm. I need to know about, if someone's encouraging you to speak in code using emojis and letting them know if I walk in the room that I need to know about all kinds of things that parents need to have those conversations in advance. And then also I'm not sure how old you are, but when I was 
younger, we had uh, the brick phone. It was like a big, mm-hmm. huge, big old phone. And we didn't yes. have, you know, the internet at our fingertips like we do now. And so the, the, everybody is reacting to this generation of people who did grow up with that. And, you know, it's it's a whole different world. Um, my own niece was 12 years old and my sister thought she put parental controls on her phone and mm-hmm. my niece was able to bypass that, create an Instagram and had a man asking her for nude photos of herself. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there are tools out there. If you've ever heard of Bark Technologies or Gab, G-A-B-B, Gab Wireless, Okay. Both of those entities, if you use the code a chance for awareness, it'll give you a discount. But they have phones, they have, um, you know, smartphones that look like Apple phones, Apple watches, you know, internet routers that basically control what's going on on those devices, and it will notify the parents mm. that someone's trying to engage with their child inappropriately. Mm. So. With the tools, with the conversations, with the expectation of and growing up with rules in place, that's what's only that's the only thing that's going to help this situation with, um, you know, parents actually being involved with their kids and doing those things. 